Hello and welcome. My name's Ian Judd. I'm a heating trainer for Daikin, and it's going to be my pleasure to take you through the new Altherma 3 monoblock. I'm standing next to the monoblock, pretty much as delivered. I've taken the outer packaging off so we can get inside and see what you'll find inside the boxing. So as you can see, uh, when the unit arrives with you, it's well protected. It's good to see that all the packaging is cardboard, so it's recyclable. What we're going to do now is we're going to pop the top lid off and we're going to take a little look at what's inside. So the lid comes off uh, and once we've got the lid off, what you can see, uh, we've got three compartments on the top. Okay, so the first compartment contains two straps. The straps are designed to help you manoeuvre the unit into place uh, on the anti-vibration feet. The unit weighs around about 149 kilograms, so it's fairly weighty. So these are a useful aid to manoeuvring it into place. They're designed for one use, so once you've got your unit into place, they're designed to be discarded. In the middle compartment, we've got the all-important installation manual. The final compartment contains the user interface. Uh, you'll locate this within the property, and this is where you, as the installer, interface and configure the unit to do what you require for your customer's particular heating system. Those of you that are familiar with the Altherma D series will probably recognise this interface. The two dials and the three buttons are a real giveaway. This is where you interact with the unit. This is where you make your configuration settings to get the maximum potential out of the heat pump for your heating system. The only difference between this interface and the one that you're used to seeing on the other Altherma D series product is that you install this one within the property and you take four wires from the interface back to the outdoor unit. Right, so one point just to make a note of is there's a separate cardboard box on the front of the unit, uh, this box here. This box contains the plastic discharge grill for the unit. Now, it's plastic, so it's obviously breakable. So my advice to you would be, get this box to a place of safety as soon as you possibly can. Very simple to remove the box. You simply pull the box towards you, it comes out of the packaging, catch hold of the box, and move it away and just put it in a safe location until you require it. As you can see, the grill has a protective wrapping within the box. If we take the wrapping off, we can see the grill. The grill simply clips into place on the front of the unit and then there are four supplied bolts just to secure it in place. The unit is supplied with one isolation valve. The valve that's supplied is the return valve and contains a filter to protect the components within the outdoor unit. To access the location of this valve, you need to take the side panel off of the unit. Okay, so we've got the front cover off uh, and what you can see, the valve that I was referring to is neatly packaged for you down here in the bottom of the tray. So we'll take the valve out and I'll show you the valve so you're familiar with what it looks like. So, here's the return valve uh, that I mentioned. Uh, you can see it comes pre-fitted with a filter uh, to protect the components in the outdoor unit. Please try and remember that we do just supply the return valve and you will need to supply your own flow isolation valve. Depending on the type of installation that you're undertaking, the number of main power supplies required will vary. For a heating and hot water system, three main power supplies will be required. The outdoor unit requires its own dedicated power supply. That will be a 32 amp supply. Within the outdoor unit, there is ready fitted a three kilowatt backup heater. That backup heater will require its own dedicated 16 amp supply. Finally, as we've got a hot water cylinder, the hot water cylinder is likely to have a booster or, if you prefer, an immersion heater fitted into it. That booster or immersion heater will require its own dedicated 16 amp supply. Now the point to note here really is that the controls for the booster heater or immersion heater are contained within or will be contained within the outdoor unit once installed. So it's important to remember that the power supply for the booster heater comes to the outdoor unit first and then wires to the booster heater. Okay, so the unit that we're looking at today is a single phase unit, so it runs on a single phase supply. It's useful to know that the units can also be purchased as three phase units. The main electrical supply connects to the front of the unit. The electrical connections for the main supply are housed beneath this protective covering. So the main connections are on the front of the unit, as you can see. We've already mentioned that this is a single phase unit, so the live, neutral and protective earth connections are simply made here. 
Okay, so the second electrical supplier that I'd like to talk about is the supply for the backup heater. The backup heater is pre-fitted to the unit. The controls for the backup heater are pre-fitted to the unit. So we simply need to bring our electrical supply to the outdoor unit. The connections are on the side of the unit. The connection block is here, and it's very simply, as this is a single phase unit, a live, neutral, and earth connection. And you may remember, it's a 16 amp supply for the backup heater. Controls wiring for the unit is simple and straightforward, and if you're familiar with our Therma product, it's very similar to what you'll already be doing. The terminal strips for the controls wiring are housed in the outdoor unit, one at the front and a second on the side here. So the third main power supply required, you may remember, is for the booster heater or immersion heater in the cylinder. The contact of the controls that booster heater is supplied as an optional extra. If you choose to use a Daikin cylinder, it will come with the Daikin cylinder. If you choose to use a third party cylinder, then you'll have to order an EKUMB part kit. And one part of that kit is the domestic hot water contactor. This contactor is mounted again in the outdoor unit. So it's another power supply coming to the outdoor unit. And that'll be a 16 amp supply. So the contactor um, and the terminal strip are mounted in the front of the unit on pre-drilled holes. As you can see, the contactor comes supplied with a flying lead. Route this flying lead back through the unit, outer cable gland supplied for you at the rear and connect the supplied cable to the local isolation point for the 16 amp supply for the booster heater. Okay, if we come round the side of the unit and take a look in, uh, what we see are the hydraulic components of the unit. Those of you that work with gas and oil boilers will of course recognise a lot of the components. You'll be familiar with plate-to-plate -plate heat exchangers, although I doubt you'll regularly see a plate-to-plate -plate heat exchanger quite as big as this one. The plate heat exchanger is obviously where the energy is exchanged from the refrigerant to our system water. One thing that I'd like to point out is this cap. The location that I'm pointing to is designed to take a flow switch. The unit, as standard and as supplied, is designed to work with clean water. Clean water without the addition of glycol. If we are going to run with clean water, obviously we're going to add inhibitor and biocide as necessary. What we're also going to add are antifreeze valves to protect the unit from freezing. Now the unit will look after itself, but it relies on the fact that the power supply is connected to look after itself. If for any reason the power is cut off to the unit, it's important to make sure that during cold weather the unit can't freeze. The antifreeze valves are a mechanical way of preventing the unit from freezing during times of power failure. Okay, the pressure relief valve for the system is located here and you can see it's pre-piped. The discharge is pre-piped down through the unit and discharges through the bottom plate of the unit. Just be sure when you've got your unit into place that you make sure that that pipe is still in location and hasn't moved during transit. Okay, coming around the back of the unit now, uh, you can see we've got the data badge, which gives you lots of important information about the unit. The unit is available in four sizes, uh, a 9, 11, 14 and 16. The flow and return connections are also on the back, the flow connection being the top connection uh, and the return connection being the bottom connection. We've got two cable glands for our main power supplies and then we've got two rubber grommets uh, for our controls wiring and also for our sensors back to the outdoor unit. It's important to make sure that the unit is up off of the floor. The minimum clearance beneath the unit is 150 millimetres. However, the unit should always be sighted at least 100 millimetres above the expected snowfall level for the area in which the unit is being installed. Three anti-vibration feet will be required to mount the unit. They are available in a pack of three and the actual anti-vibration foot itself is 150 mil high. So it does give you the minimum clearance as standard. So the connections off of the monoblock unit, as you're aware, are all water. Uh, and as we spoke about earlier, we supply a return valve. You're gonna field supply a flow valve. The valves screw straight onto the inch BSP threads on the back of the unit, as we saw just now. Off of the valves, we're gonna use flexible hoses. Flexible hoses are available in two varieties, either straight or angled. If you choose the angled variety, they come with a swept 90 degree bend on the end of them. 
Whether you use angled or whether you use straight will depend purely on your system pipe work and which is the more convenient. The hoses, as you can see, are fully insulated. They come fully pre-insulated, 19mm uh, Armaflex type insulation with a protective coating around the Armaflex to protect it from the effects of ultraviolet radiation on the insulation. Another option that you might like to consider is the addition of a KRP board. The KRP board is another optional extra. Uh, one of the purposes of the KRP board is to allow you to install a bivalent system. So if your customer's got an existing heat generator that they'd like to incorporate into their system, the KRP board will allow you to do that. The KRP board mounts in the outdoor unit and there's a couple of pre-drilled holes uh, in the back plate and the KRP board simply mounts on plastic posts that are supplied with the board. The main heat exchanger on the outdoor unit is pressed from aluminium and of course it's protected at the factory against corrosion. Another optional extra that you may wish to consider is Bligold treatment of the heat exchanger. This is only necessary if you're intending to install the unit close to the coast. Um, it protects the heat exchanger against the aggressive nature of the sea air. If you have a heating and a hot water system, another option you may like to consider is the Daikin Part Pre Plumb Cylinder. The cylinder comes in a range of sizes, 150 litres up to 300 litres. The big advantage of using the Daikin cylinder is that it comes with everything that you need to incorporate the cylinder into the Altherma 3 monoblock system. If you want to use a third party cylinder, that is possible, uh, subject to a couple of constraints. The key thing to remember is that the third party cylinder obviously will not come with the components required to integrate that cylinder into the Altherma system. If you're gonna use a third party cylinder, please remember to order an EKUMB parts kit as an optional extra. That will give you the parts that you need to incorporate that third party cylinder into your Altherma system. Okay, so we've seen the flow and return connections on the back of the unit. A question that often comes up is, how far can I site the outdoor unit away from the property? There is a maximum distance that the unit can be from the domestic hot water cylinder, and that maximum distance is 10 metres. We need to be careful when we're designing our systems to ensure that we've got sufficient water volume to carry out the defrost cycle. The defrost cycle is all about thawing out the heat exchanger on the outdoor unit. If we think about it, we're sucking air into the back of the unit, and we're expelling air out the front of the unit. Now the air coming onto the unit will be at one temperature, and obviously the air coming off of the unit will be at a completely different temperature because we stripped the energy out of that air. Typically, you'd expect the difference in temperature between the air onto the unit and the air off of the unit to be somewhere between seven and 12 degrees. Now you can imagine, when I left home this morning, uh, the temperature was around about five degrees. So if the air was going onto my unit at five degrees, it could quite possibly be coming off of my unit at minus five degrees. So somewhere within that heat exchanger on the back of the unit, the air would be freezing. More importantly, the water vapor contained within that air would be freezing. So during certain conditions, the heat exchanger on the outdoor unit will freeze up. It's not a problem. The unit simply reverses its process so rather than putting the hot refrigerant gas into the heat exchanger to warm our system water, it starts taking energy from the system to boil the refrigerant and then puts that hot refrigerant gas onto the outdoor unit to defrost the heat exchanger. Very important to make sure that our system will always have the volume of free water required to carry out the defrost cycle. That volume of water is 20 litres. Volume's only half the story. We need to have flow as well to successfully carry out the defrost. So on this particular unit, we're looking at a flow rate of 22 litres per minute. I hope you found this video on the Daikin Altherma 3 monoblock informative. If you'd like to know more, please contact Daikin.